This video is sponsored by KiwiCo. More about them later. Last week, I tried to make a chair, but as you can see, it didn't really go that well. I assembled the whole thing, was super proud of myself, then I tried to sit in it, and then this happened. So yeah, that could have definitely gone better. That's exactly what I'm hoping for today, because today I want to redeem myself and make a chair that I can actually sit in. Now the main problem with this chair is basically the piece that holds the back to the rest of the chair. This is just cut out of one single sheet of wood, so the one grade runs like this, and that is exactly why it broke. So the first thing that we need to figure out for the second chair that I'm going to build in this video is how to make this piece. Now instead of just taking a big sheet of wood and cutting the whole part out of that one, what I'm going to try and do instead is take a long straight piece of wood and then bend it until it has this shape. Now, I obviously can't just try and bend it like it is now because it would just break in half. So that is why I made this contraption right here. Now, this is a piece of ventilation tubing. I've capped off one of the ends and this door allows me to close off the other end. And you can see that there's steam coming out of this hole here. That steam is coming from this thing. This is normally used to, with the help of this, strip wallpapers off of walls with steam. But instead, we're gonna try and use the steam to make this wood soft enough to be able to bend. So the wood goes in here. It has to stay in there for about an hour for every inch of thickness. So we're gonna leave that thing in there for about 45 minutes. Close this thing off. So we'll let that steam for a while and then we'll try to bend it. All right, so it's been about 45, 50 minutes since I put the piece of wood in the steamer. It's nice and toasty at about 104 degrees. And once I take it out of there, I only have seconds to try and bend it before it cools down too much so it doesn't work anymore. And to do that, this thing is my homemade bending jig. The idea here being that I can insert my hot piece of wood in here, wedge it between the piece of wood here that has a middle band attached to it. And this middle band is here so we hopefully only compress the wood fibers and not stretch them because wood doesn't like stretching and if that happens, the wood is gonna break on the outside. All right, but enough talk. Let's see if this actually works. Woo! Woo, it sure is hot. Wow. Insert that in there. Wedge it here and try and bend the thing slowly but steadily. It's looking all right. <sighs> that chair was stressful. <laughs> right, it's 24 hours later and this piece of wood should be completely dry by now and hopefully hold its shape. Now, I am really excited to see how this went. To be honest, I did both hear and see some cracking when I bent it yesterday. So I'm really curious to see how this thing turned out. Well, we bent it all right, but just like I feared, there are some cracks on the outside here and the inside of the wood has buckled a bit. Although this was a really fun thing to try out and I think we can use it in some other project in the future. But for this chair, I don't think steam bending is the right choice. This was just a test. The real thing would have to be both thicker and more of a bend. And to be honest, it's not the first time I've tried this. This was sort of like the last attempt before I give up. So we're gonna have to figure out something else. Right, so since this wood bending thing isn't gonna work out, that's okay, on to plan B, which is gonna be taking thinner strips of wood, which are much easier to bend, and I'll take a whole bunch of these, squish them together with a bunch of glue in between two molds so that they hold the right shape, and then hopefully, once the glue sets, everything should have the right shape, it should be super strong and look like one single piece of wood. Now, all we need is a whole bunch of wooden strips, which is no problem, luckily, I have a bit of wood laying around. So we just got a new delivery of some oak, and I hope this is gonna be enough to make my chair. <laughs> you might think I'm joking, but the last time I tried to make that chair, I used about three times as much wood as expected because I just messed up so many times. Oh, and to process all this wood, look what we got. The combined jointer and planer, and it is what is gonna allow us to turn these rough cup boards into nice smooth boards that we can then build stuff out of. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take one of these oak boards. I'll start by cutting it to the right length. Then I'll run them over the jointer to make sure that one side is perfectly flat. I'll repeat that process for one of the short sides so we get a perfectly 90 degree angle to that flat face. Once we have that, we can convert our jointer into a planer, send the boards through so that they end up in the right thickness. And then all that's left to do is cut that board up into many thin individual strips that we can then use to laminate together our seat back brace. And just like that, we turn one solid chunk of wood into a bunch of really thin strips. Now, yes, there's a ton of ways doing this on the table saw, but the saw cut is so nice that I can just glue these together as is and I don't have to sand them or plane them again. So overall, I think I save material doing this. Now, the next thing we need is something to give these strips of wood their shape. And for that, I've CNC cut out these two pieces of MDF. 
these two are the exact shape I want the wood to have afterwards. This is the outside size, this is the inside size. So the plan is to take all these strips of wood with a bunch of glue in between and then squish them between these two shapes. I'll just screw this thing onto this board right here and then I'll take this piece, cut it into individual pieces so it's much easier to apply pressure at one point at a time. All right, we're ready to rock. I've also covered all these parts in packing tape so that the glue doesn't stick to the mold. Now the next step is gonna be to cover all of these in plenty of glue. Then we've gotta hurry up and before the glue sets, clamp this together one by one at a time until it hopefully it has the shape we want. <laughs> well, I'm glad that was stressful. It's the day after and it's time to see if we did this right. <laughs> Definitely think this is strong enough. Right, so this thing is looking pretty rough. So we need to get this surface cleaned up so we can get it down to the right thickness. Wow, this thing is really taking shape. And as you can see, with the help of some masking tape and super glue, I stuck on one of these MDF routing templates that I made on the CNC machine. And then so I don't have to use the router to remove all that material, I just roughly cut around the whole shape on my bandsaw. So now we're ready to use the router to get this thing into final shape. And now this is why that trick with masking tape and super glue is so nice. You can just peel off the template and we're left with our final shape. Now all that's left to do to this, to make this our first finished part, is use that big rounder bit that we used on all the parts the last time, round over a bunch of these edges, and that's how we're gonna turn apart from this into this. Doesn't this look so cool? I mean, yes, it needs a little bit of sanding, but this is our very first finished part for this new chair. So, uh, <laughs> at least we're after a good start. Let's move on to making the seat and back that we're gonna attach this part. But first, a quick ad for today's sponsor, Kiviko. Kiviko creates super cool, hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids and concept in concept and STEM in a fun and engaging way. They offer eight different subscription lines, each catering to different age groups and topics. They come with detailed, kid-friendly instructions and an educational magazine filled with content so you can learn even more about that crate's theme. Every box comes with everything you need for that month's project, so you never have to worry about not having the right tools or running out of supplies and they now ship to over 40 countries. Kiviko believes that small lessons today can mean big, world-changing ideas tomorrow, and sometimes when you're small, it's just much easier to think big. They actually sent me one of their crates to try out, and in this project, I built this automatic soap dispenser complete with peristaltic pump, electronics, and everything. The kit came with everything I needed and great step-by-step -step instructions for how to put the whole thing together. And, <laughs> it actually works. Now, if you use the link in the description below or go to kibico.com slash Alexander Chappelle, they'll give you 50% off your first month of any crate. When it comes to the seat and backrest, the last time I made the chair, I made them out of this pre-glued up board. Now, the problem is that these only come in 28 millimeters. So to make this shape, I had to make the backrest out of two individual parts. In the case of the seat, I actually had to glue together multiple of these boards and then glue together two parts to make just that one seat. That's a ton of work that I don't want to do again, but since I now have a thicknesser and a planer, I can take full advantage of that. Because just like with the strips for the back, I can use the thick lumber that I have, plane it down, make sure it's nice and square, get it to the right thickness, and then cut them in through the strips on the table saw, so that I then end up with a bunch of these real nice oak wooden strips. Now I can use these, glue all of these together into one big chunk that we then can build the seat and the backrest out of. I'm all set up. This is gonna be the same exact process as with the bent piece, only hopefully a whole lot less stressful. Glue is on, now I can just stack these one by one in between these clamps and then line everything up and squish them together. <sighs> So the day after, the glue is set and we've got a nice solid chunk of oak. Now it's time to turn this thing into a seat for our chair. And we're gonna do that on this CNC machine. Whoop. And would you look at that? This chunk of oak is already ready to be machined. Now I've done a few things already. I've attached it to the table, I've surfaced one side and I flipped it over and did the same thing to the other. That means that this block is not only flat, but also the right thickness for what we're gonna do now. Now apart from the fact that I can cut the whole seat out of one piece instead of two pieces and glue them together after the fact, the only difference is that I'm gonna use the 60 mil ball nose bit for both the roughing and the finish pass. That way I don't have to change bits halfway through. And apart from not being able to get into a couple small details, the over surface finish should actually be better. So let's try this out.
That is one side completely done and oh boy, it looks amazing. Now on to the other side. Same as last time, I've drilled a couple of holes into which I've inserted locating pins. So the next step is to drill those same locating holes into my spoil board, flip this whole thing upside down and hope that everything lines up once we go to machine the other side. <laughs> yes! I think it worked. <laughs> this thing looks so cool. Funny enough, it turns out if you just do it one more time, you end up with another one. Now this one has a slightly different shape because this is the back. And as opposed to last time where I ended up having to do it like four times before I got it right, I got these two right on the first try. Now all I gotta do is jump on the bandsaw and cut the whole thing out of there, remove the rest of these small tabs, give the whole thing a good sanding. And just like that, we got our seat and a backrest. And if anything, I think these look even better than the last one I made because compared to the previous one, since I was able to cut them out of one solid piece, the seat is a bit more curved both this way and this way, as well as being a little bit thicker for that extra strength. And the same thing goes with the backrest. That one also has a bit more curvature and also a tiny bit more overall thickness, which all is hopefully gonna help make this chair actually usable and able to sit in and not just a piece of, I don't know what you wanna call it, that breaks the first try. Right, so now that, that is done, all that's left is, well, the rest. And the next step is gonna be the leg structure of this chair. Now in this first version I built, the leg structure seemed fine. It was totally fine to sit on. However, I did notice a weak spot. You see, where I glued these two different pieces together right here, I'm still able to wiggle them a little bit, which means they're not actually connected. So there definitely is a weak spot right here, and I feel like we can solve this in a better way. Now, my way of solving it better are these weirdly cut boards. I've again made use of my combi planer, plane down some boards to the right thickness. Now, each one of these boards is gonna become two individual leg pieces, because instead of making the leg that is joined up here, I actually wanna make the legs out of two individual pieces, that are joined together with a seam running all the way down the leg. And that is exactly why there's an angle cut on all these boards. So my plan is to attach this board onto this little jig I made here on the CNC machine, and then cut out a leg, flip this whole thing 180 degrees, and cut the other leg out of the other side of the board. That's why both sides are chamfered. And if you repeat that process, Three more times, you end up with eight of these leg pieces because for some reason I felt it wasn't difficult enough to make a chair with four legs, so I had to make eight. Now you can see how a pair of these are meant to go together to form one leg each. And just like the last time, I'm gonna connect these together with these ribbon looking things that I've also machined out of the same block. So that's exactly what we're doing now. We're gonna turn these eight pieces into the four individual sides of the chair. I'll make sure to use plenty of glue, hammer in the ribbons, make sure that everything is aligned properly. And after repeating that process four times, we're left with all four sides of the chair. And after a good bit of sanding, these actually turn out really nice. Now we're ready to glue these things together into the legs of the chair. But since I want the chair to have round legs, just like the previous one I built, we need to do something about these square edges. On the outside here, I will be able to do that after everything is glued up. But on the inside, I've already used that big round door bit so that the inside corner already is really nice and rounded. Next step, try and see if this fits. <laughs> Do you think that's enough clamps to glue just one side? That chair looks like the base of a chair. Next step, rounding over all the edges. And after a fair bit of sanding, we've got our finished base structure for this chair. It's amazing how much the look changes from having those rough, sharp edges to not having everything round and smooth. And just looking at the chair like this, it's almost impossible to see the glue seam that runs all the way down the legs. And if I've done this right, all the parts should hopefully fit. And then the backrest. I mean, it sure looks like a chair, but so did the last one, and I wouldn't really call that one a chair. All right, I guess I'll step-by-step -step glue and screw together this chair. I'll mostly do it the same way as last time, because that part actually worked. <laughs> Final step. All right, now it's all or nothing. This chair is finished. 
I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. Like everything fits together super nicely, much better than the last time. Everything looks good, even better than the last time. I've attached the back in a really nice way and the joints here fit super well. But did I manage to make a chair that can actually sit on? <laughs> also, it's been like four hours since I glued those legs together. So this might not be the best idea. That works, that's a chair. <laughs> Look, there's a tiny bit of flex, but I mean, that's a chair. Oh boy, this has been a long journey. Just in case you forgot, this is me trying to sit on my last chair. <laughs> no. And this is me on the new one. Yeah. I made a chair! Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye bye! Oh, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and watch a bunch of other videos. Bye!